Hey guys, I'm so glad you're joining me this week. This Sunday is Valentine's Day, and we can't have a day where people are focused on love without talking about, well, you guessed it, love. Depending on how you feel about Valentine's Day, it's either a happy day, a lonely day, or maybe even a gross day in your mind. I can just hear some of you when I say love going, ew. Well, for you guys, at least there's candy, right? For the people who are happy-go-lucky in love, Valentine's Day is a chance to show the person you care about and maybe even everyone around just how much you care. People go all out buying giant bears, balloons, flowers, chocolates, all sorts of things. I still have the giant bear my husband gave me on our first Valentine's Day together in high school because it was so special to me. Nowadays, Valentine's Day cards cost big money, but they're nothing new. People have been writing love notes back and forth to each other since biblical times. Song of Solomon in the Bible is a whole mushy-gushy love poem written by King Solomon. But even King Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived, will tell you that love is more than just gifts and pretty words. Love is action. It's a commitment. Love isn't something you say, but something you do. And sad to say, but many of the expressions of love given on Valentine's Day will be nothing more than just words. The people sending them aren't old enough to, or maybe just don't understand, that love is more than just sending flowers or giving gifts so your friends at school will see you get something. It's caring about someone when they're sick. It's listening to them talk about their bad day. It's lending a hand when nobody else will. It's doing a million little things every day, not to get something in return, but simply because you've committed yourself to loving someone. We've been talking about all the amazing things Jesus did when he was on the earth. And while he never had a Valentine's sweetheart, he did show us what true love looked like over and over. And we're gonna take a look at one of the things he did out of pure love for the men he called to be his disciples. You can find this story in John chapter 13, verses one through 17. It was just before Passover festival and Jesus and the disciples were having a meal together. Now they didn't have tables that were tall and chairs like we do. People sat low to the ground and their feet would be visible at mealtime. And since the roads were dirty and the, they wore sandals all the time, and if you weren't lucky enough to have an animal to ride on, you'd end up walking behind that animal. So the roads are dirt, your feet would get dirty and you'd probably end up stepping in some of the stuff left behind by the animals your feet would get real nasty. So when you got to someone's house, especially if you were going to have a meal together, it was important to get all of that nastiness off of your feet. And normally a servant would do it. But this time, Jesus took it upon himself to wrap a towel around his waist, pour some water into the basin, and start washing the disciples' feet, using the towel on his waist to dry their feet. Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, took up foot washing duty. Now, Simon Peter had a problem with that picture and he was like, no, 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 not you, Jesus. You're not washing my feet. You're too important to do that. But Jesus said, you might not understand now, but you will later. Unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. So Peter was like, oh, okay, well then wash all of me, my hands, my head, everything. And Jesus said, if you've had a bath, only your feet need washed. Your body is clean and you are clean, though not everyone here is. And he said that because this was just before Judas was going to betray him and he knew it was going to happen. So he finished washing everyone's feet, cleaned himself up and returned to the place at the table he was supposed to sit. And once he was there, he asked them if they understood what he had just done. And he said to them, I did this as an example for you as your teacher and your Lord. As I've washed your feet, you should wash others. A servant is not greater than his master. A messenger is not greater than the person that sent him. If you know these things, you'll be happy to do them. Jesus humbled himself down to wash the feet of his friends in order to show us what true love was. Love isn't pretty rhyming words on a card or candies in a box. It's washing feet. It's carrying books. It's sacrificing your time, money, and hard work to help someone. It's putting others first and making ourselves the least, just like Jesus did. Love is an action. The life of Jesus shows us over and over how we can put love into action. 
The simple act of love is even more remarkable when we know what Jesus knew in that moment. He knew that within hours, Judas was going to betray him and hand him over to his enemies to be put on trial. But he didn't leave Judas' feet dirty. Can you say you would have done the same thing? You're washing everyone's feet and you get down the line to Judas and you're like, nope, not you, Judas. You can keep your grimy feet. He also knew that nine of those people in that room were going to abandon him in that moment of betrayal and go into hiding. Only two of those people followed him into town watching from afar as he was accused of crimes that he didn't commit. But Jesus washed everyone's feet because he had come to give his life for them and save them from their sins. He knew nobody there was perfect, but he still loved them unconditionally, just like he loves us. Jesus wants us to love others like he did. He wants us to put other people first, in our family, in our friends, even our enemies. I know it's hard. Jesus knows it's hard, but he's always with us, helping us do it. Anytime we humble ourselves to put others first, especially in a time where so many people around us are struggling, we bear witness to the love of Jesus. Valentine's is a great opportunity to show love to someone. This week, I challenge you to look for an opportunity to love someone. Let's love others like Jesus did with actions, not just with words, so that through our service, we can share Jesus's love. I'll see you guys next week when we continue Jesus Fixed It. Bye, guys.